And welcome back to the TV show. I'm Jay Black, joined as always by Angela Cataldi and Rhea Hughes. Guys, how are you? Great, great, super. Can't wait to get going. Lots of good TV to talk about. Lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, we got to start by saying, Rhea, drinking a glass of wine. She is Having living a glass large. of wine. Look at that. It's been well, a bit she... of a rough day, so I said, screw oh. it, I'm having a glass of wine. Rhea said uh, uh, that uh, this is her happy hour, and I want to say that all the years we worked together, she never had a happy hour. <laughs> so things must be better now. <laughs> she, used to, she used to call it her melancholy morning, which is not <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, but there is a lot to get to, and uh, let's start with uh, a bit of news that I saw when I, you know, I always do the, the reading uh, before... Uh, we do these podcasts. What's going on? And I saw, I don't know if you guys are Yellowstone fans. I am not, but it is the biggest show currently airing on any network. I have network. never seen it. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. And, and as usual, I've seen it for one reason. Not Kevin Costner. Hot, hot redhead? <laughs> Kelly Riley. You are correct, man. <laughs> she is spectacular. And we got to get a French movies, Jay. That's how much I love Kelly Riley. I'm going to start a TV show called Hot Redheads just sit around right, talking. Right. And Angela Cataldi will give it. it the highest rating ever. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the there was reports that Kevin Costner is not happy with uh, the Sheridan verse. The, you know, he doesn't want to be part of um, uh, Yellowstone anymore. He said that in the second half of the fifth season, he will, only wants to work one week on the entire season. <laughs> And so what happened was they went out and they got Matthew McConaughey and they said, Matthew McConaughey is going to star in a spinoff show for um, uh, the, the Yellowstone. And that uh, the, what they're doing is they're positioning this spinoff show as either an actual spinoff show in the 900 shows in the extended universe of uh, Yellowstone, or he's going to step in as Kevin Costner's replacement if Kevin Costner wants to leave. So my question to you guys is, number one, uh, why in the world would Kevin Costner shoot himself in the foot like this? Because it's the only, what else did he have going on before Yellowstone? Is he going to go do draft day two? I don't think there was a lot of people that want that. I hope not. Yeah. Uh, and and he's number Jay, he's got so much money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he may just be like, I'm just, I mean, how, and again, how old is he? 65? Yeah, you know what? That's a good question. I'll look it up while we're talking. You know, he may just be like, I have so much money and I just don't need to work this hard anymore. 68. Well, yeah. I, uh, I would like to say this about Kevin Costner. If he is in a movie and, and we are watching it together, me and my wife, yeah. I no longer exist. <laughs> he is her hall pass. She really? loves him. The 68 thing, well, she obviously likes older dudes. Look at me. Clearly. <laughs> right, right. But but uh, Kevin Costner. He's Co still a good-looking man. man. The, the, the guy is so successful. Yes. He's not going to do what they tell him. When you're that successful, you don't do it. He's, who do I know like that? Who do I know like that? Who do I know like that? <laughs> hey, I'll get, let, hold on. Let me take a drink of wine. I'll get back to you. <laughs> you're better with the wine, man. I like you better with the wine. <laughs> No, I, my only thing is like, I don't understand these guys. I know that he was a big star. He's a big director. I mean, yeah. he has his Academy award winning movie, which are not a lot of guys have, but you know, his career was fairly stalled before he got on this show. Right. And it's just one of those things where like, I get it. He's got a, a head about him where maybe he doesn't get along with the creator. Maybe he doesn't like the direction that it's going in, but you know, also, you got to say the late period revival of your career has everything to do with this show and everything to do with this creator. So maybe trust them just a little bit is all I'm saying. But but this is not uncommon. It doesn't have to be when you've already had a great career. Uh, uh, Shelley Long left Cheers. Yeah. I, and I watched, I binged that last year. And the best years of Cheers were when Shelley yep. Long was 100%. No and she walked away. Uh, Therese Company. I yep. didn't. Uh, what's her name? Suzanne, Suzanne Summers. He walked away. David Caruso and NYPD Blue. He walked away. How about this one? They, they, this is what they do now. They, there is a show that's on network TV right now that is a rotting corpse of what was <laughs> once a good show. And, and it was the original show, Roseanne, really right. good. They brought it back. 
really good. Yep. She got in trouble. She yep. became toxic. They killed her off. And now what's left is the rotting corpse. Right. None <laughs> of those people are interesting. I've actually tried it a couple of times. I'm sorry. Give it up. I don't right. care who's watching it. It is a disgrace to take a good show and turn it into dreck. Right. And you know what's crazy, Ange, is I looked up Suzanne Summers because we all know she was on there and she never really did anything. No. Do you know she has a net worth of $100 million oh. from Thighmaster yeah. and all the books she did around it. Wow. So it wound up actually, and she loves to talk about how her and her 75 year old husband have sex three times a day. Yeah. So life apparently has not been bad to her right. because she wound up making tons of money. I also looked up real quick Kevin Cosner's net worth. $250 million. He never <laughs> has to work again. So I get it. I no, get it. Fair that enough. Would that would do it. I, I guess the only person who's gotten uh, bigger than that is what? George Foreman, right? With the George Foreman oh, grill? Geez. Yes. He's, right, yeah. he's worth $400 billion, wow, I believe, from yeah. that bill, if not more. <laughs> Uh, all right. So last week uh, we had a conversation, uh, Rhea, about uh, the uh, Love is Blind, which my yep. wife is still watching. It is torturous. My <laughs> least favorite thing that I do. But uh, in the lead up to that, we talked about some experience with uh, reality yep. shows. And I have had some experience with reality mm -hmm. shows and I know you have as well. Yep. And I just want to take a moment for our listeners, because the, the biggest <laughs> lie on television is putting reality in yes. front of reality shows. Yes. They are more fictional than anything that you're yeah. watching that is called a, a, a sitcom or a drama. Uh, what was your experience, uh, Rhea? What were you on and what was uh, what was it like? So I'm going to say it was before Clark was born. So it was, God, it's, you know, I mean, he's almost 14. So it was 15 to 17 years ago. I did an episode of Trading Spaces. And I have to say, I loved it. It was when I was living in Queen Village and they did a great job. But here's the crazy thing. I was a massive fan of Trading Spaces. Yeah. And it was like, you you and a neighbor, and I did it with my best friend, Mary, who at the time lived next door to me. And, you know, you trade it and you do all the work. And they had, you know, the people up till the night before the reveal to like three in the morning. So I get in this and they bring in the the two uh, hosts who do it right. with us. And I forget, I the one guy's name was Carter. I had who might be one of the most beautiful men I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. He's the carpenter, but he's like a man and also super nice guy. They come in. They literally would tape like, okay, Rhea, you've got the, uh, the, what is it? The saw or whatever, thing like that, which I almost hurt people with. Let's get you doing it. I did it for like two minutes. Right. They would get me doing it, cut the piece of thing, sewing, blah, blah, blah. Then they had crews of 15 for each house, a crew of 15 people on Mary's house, crew of 15 on mine. The last night it was a Saturday. It was a yeah, Saturday night. Sunday would be the, the big reveal that they would tape. The producer I had, who I loved, worked on Deadliest Catch. He looks at me and goes, listen, it's my birthday tonight. So we're going across the street to for Pete's sake and getting loaded. So the crew, we're finishing at like 1030. The crew's <laughs> going to finish up. I said, fantastic. Mary, unfortunately, did not have as nice a producer. It actually was right. But it was, they have crews in. Yeah. So like, although you do some of the work, the, the reason that they look so great is not because of the homeowners. Right. Wow. I, yep. Rhea, one thing sticks out. I, yep. You were a fan of the show before you yep. were on it. Yep. You were as big a fan after you were on it. Well, I was for one reason, because I, I mean, I just like, the, I, I'm a HD, you know me, I'm a home improvement person. It's, I love those kind of shows. Now I have different stuff that I watch. I got, I now look for tells. I was like, how do you know when a homeowner is really crazy? So I look for those that like, they're like, yeah, if they're just, they keep changing stuff. So they gave me kind of a lot of background on it. I am still a fan, but I now know that if there are these shows where they're competition, that the homeowner is doing very little of the work. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I, I had a brief experience with two reality shows. The first one was the two Corys, uh, which was Corey uh -huh. Feldman and Corey Haim, uh, uh -huh. because uh -huh. I knew their manager. And they wanted to end the season on a high note. So they had my writing partner and I pitch them an idea for a sequel to License to Drive that they agreed to be in. And they celebrated it like it was a big deal. We came up with the pitch 
for that show. There was no money behind it. Nobody was going to make that. <laughs> and they acted like it was a big deal. So that was my first one. The second one, I was on Last Comic Standing season two. Oh, oh wow. Okay. I didn't but know that. No, no. Listen, Angela, I don't talk about it because it was a brutal experience. Here's, <laughs> here's what happened. So I go in and it's just the audition process. It's like no audience, just producers in the background. I start into my act. I get about no more than 90 seconds in. And the producer gives me a cut sign and goes, no. hey, we're sorry. We don't, we have too many of your kind of comic. Oh, What is your wait, kind of comic? Well, I believe straight white guy because- that I was about to say, that's know, what it was. Right, and, which is fine. I get that. Yeah, we want to have sure. diversity. You're putting together a cast. I wasn't mad about that. I was just mad they cut me off. Like, they didn't even give me the opportunity to tell me I was a bad comedian. They go, there's too many of your type. So I go, really? Like that. And they go, yeah, sorry. And I'm like, all right. And I leave. I never think anything of it, except when they're airing Last Comic Standing, all of a sudden, my phone blows up. And everybody's like, we just saw you get demolished on huh. Last Comic Standing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I go and I watch the episode. It's me starting into my act. Cuts to Richard Belzer, who yeah. was not there, who ah. goes, I really like you. I want to pass you through. And then it cuts back to me going, really? Then it cuts back to Richard Belzer going, no. And then it cuts to me walking off all upset. Oh my so God. it made it look like I failed miserably, wow. which... Is I get it. It's TV. I understand. Yeah. But that honestly broke my heart because there was I, you can't call everyone, you know, and explain no. to them. <laughs> no, it was just there was just a messing with reality. Richard Bell's even was there. It, I got me so upset, guys. I'm st like, I'm still upset about Richard Belzer. Wow. Yeah. You know, like when Richard Belzer died, I was like, I was a big fan of his. And I was like, yeah, I'm real sad they died. But he did. You know, he messed me up on that. He wasn't even involved. <laughs> they just cut to him doing that. Some producer did it. So uh, yeah, if you're watching sure. a reality show, any reality show, there is manipulation going on all over. Wow. The That's what? phenomenal. What a story. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I will tell you guys that, that isn't manipulated is the uh, love around the world for not just this segment of the podcast, but for Rhea Hughes in uh, oh. <laughs> general. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as the third highest rated yeah. TV review podcast in it uh, yes. Italy and India. If you're a country that starts with I, I expect Iceland to be next. I want all of the countries on the Iberian Peninsula going to love us. Uh, we have British Corner. Rhea, what do you got yeah. for us this week? So I'm going to do two really quick because uh, I'm a huge fan of Harlan Coben novels. I've read them all. I don't really like his sports agent ones. I like his standalones because they're mysteries. He primarily does mysteries that involve every single person, whether you're the most boring suburban mom, boring person, you know, who lives, you know, out in the woods, you have a secret in your past. And that's really what they're all on. So he's in the middle of like, a, a, he's doing 14 of his novels. He's turning into series for Netflix, which means he's making buku kind of bucks. Yeah. But he did two that I liked, Stay Close and The Stranger. Now, Stay Close is a primarily, it's three people. So it weaves together three stories. Megan, suburbanite with three kids, a husband she's super in love with. Except 17 years ago, she was a stripper. <laughs> uh, Ray is this photographer who uh, can't find the girlfriend that he had that he lost 17 years ago. And then the uh, detective who's weaved into this, the investigating these disappearances 17 years apart. So it's this, you know, crazy secret they have there. But I will tell you, it's highly binge worthy. They really each episode as they're trying to figure out what happens is Megan is at her daughter's tennis tournament and she spots a person from her past. Wow. And that's kind of how it all starts to get together. There's notes left at her house. She has a scene where she goes to this lawyer who was her lawyer back when she was a stripper. I, I should have written this guy's name down. He's unbelievably awesome. He's a massive drunk. I'll take a sip for him. <laughs> uh, but his character was really great. She's leaving there and these guys, young kids try to rob her and her old instinct and she beats the crap out of them. And it's, it was like my favorite scene. So I really like that. And when I'm saying, when Rotten Tomatoes that got 83%, 72 for audience. So people really liked it. Very bingeable. The next one is Stay Close. They're both eight episodes. This was interesting. 
because there was a wide disparity between critics and audience. 92 for critic, 53 for audience. Now, this was stay close. This is a man's at his kid's soccer tournament and a young woman, very attractive. She's, Jay, you might know her from Game of Thrones. She was in season six, um, Ornella. Oh, she here, was, I'll, look, uh, I'll look her up while you're Hannah talking. John uh, came and she comes up to him and says, I have a secret about your wife. The miscarriage that she had two years ago was a lie. She was never pregnant. And then she walks away. He goes to confront his wife. The wife disappears. This young woman proceeds to go to everybody in this small English town, start telling them that she has secrets on them. One woman who owns a nice business, she says, your daughter's uh, a high-class escort making her way through college. I want 10,000 pounds. All of these, she does it to a lot of people. Here was my problem with this one. There were too many. The premise was great. Somebody walks up and tells you a killer secret, and then they just walk away. They involve like eight people. So it gets too voluminous, if you know right. what I mean. But I will say the Ray Harlan Coben, who's like a senior producer or whatever on these, you keep wanting to go to the next episode. You're right. hooked. So even though the audience wasn't crazy about it, I, I read some reviews. They go, I hate it. And I've watched every single episode. Right. This one was just a little bit too, but he's done a lot and I like them uh, probably because I like his books and um, I recommend it. So it's Stay Close and The Stranger on Netflix. And uh, that's Hatting, Hannah Waddingham, uh, who played Septa Unella, but also the statuesque <laughs> owner of uh, the uh, Greyhounds on Ted Lasso is uh, who oh, might I, remember her by. Yeah. I forgot that one. So yeah, yeah. so but it's, it's really good. And like I said, he's a great author and, uh, and he's got a lot more. He actually has three of them, but they're in foreign language. He's got a Polish one, a French one, and an Italian one, I believe. We were just talking about how much money Kevin Costner has. Uh, it sounds to me like uh, this guy has uh, Costner yes. money times 10. That's the, exactly. a ton of dough. Uh, all right, great. So what do you have for us this week on Teen Corner? Here was the interesting thing. So Clark is on spring break. So he is down the shore with my brother. They're having a lot of fun. You know, somebody's got to work. Yeah. Um, so I said to him, I said, hey, I, I, I called him and said, I said, I need, what teen show have you been watching? He actually watched a show that I watched one episode of. He's watched two. Atypical. Available mm. on Netflix. Yep. Four seasons, eight to ten episodes. Um, it starts, it's about a young man in high school who's on the autism spectrum. Uh, he's got, you know, he lives with his mom and his dad, who are Angelo, who are played by Jennifer Jason Lee, who we all remember from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It's interesting to see her as the mother of a teenager. Um, and Michael Rappaport. So they're the parents. He's got a sister. And he's decided that he wants to start dating. So he's going to his therapist because he's on the spectrum. Any kind of loud noises, any kind of craziness in his life really just uproot him. And you see it happening. They're they're not shy about showing it. Um, he's got a bit of a crush on his therapist, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, his best friend, Zahid, takes this one. Clark told me about this. And so it might be a little bit old for like a 12, 13-year-old, but maybe 16, 17-year-old Zahid wants him to know what it will look like if he gets to second base with the girl <laughs> he's dating. So he he's 18, but he is still in high school. Takes him to a strip club. And a stripper takes pity on him and she shows him her boobs. So, you know, he can see what they look like. But uh, Clark you, was like, yeah, you that said, was kind of gross. You said stripper, but what you meant to say was hero. That uh, it, hero exactly, did that yes, for it's him. Exactly what she is. Well, Clark, Clark really liked it. He gave it a 7.4. It did really well on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, 91 it got on Rotten Tomatoes. Clark's best, this is now that I get his perspective, he liked that the kids in high school actually looked like they were high schoolers. Right. That was one thing that he said to me, but he gave it a 7.4. It's a nuclear family dealing with a kid who has autism and how you're normal some days and not normal other days, but really none of us have a normal family. And that was kind of the right. thing about it. Gee, uh, I, I watched all four seasons of it. I think it's fantastic. Oh, good. The kid that plays the um, autistic kid is either actually autistic or is an amazing actor. He's Keir, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's K-E-I-R, Keir Gilchrist. Fantastic. Oh, is he not he's unbelievably not, good he's in really that? good. Yep. Now, I, can't, I don't know if he's got those tendencies. He was just phenomenal in it. And uh, you're right, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, I hadn't seen her in so many years. Yeah. How good is she as the mom? 
He's really yeah. good at it. It's really good. I can recommend it also. I'm in the 90% that like there that. You go. I, I, w I will say, Rhea, I'd love for you to show uh, Clark an episode of Beverly Hills 90210 just when they when they cast actors who were in their 30s to play teenagers. Yes. You, re you remember Gabrielle Carter played one of the yeah, teenagers? Yeah, she was like 31. Yeah, and by the end of that run, she was in her early 40s playing a 20-something. Like, listen, she looked good for her age, but she just looked like a middle-aged mom that was hanging out with these kids. It was ridiculous. I could have made Clark watch 90210 for next week and, and get his get his opinions on I, it. I'd love to hear it. All right, Angela, what did you watch this week? I got a movie. Oh, my God. I am. I actually want to watch you're it again. Fire, Ange. I got to tell you, your last couple of recommendations, yeah. when you and I don't share the same stuff, I've loved. Rhea, I sift through a lot of garbage to get to the good stuff. <laughs> just so you know. And this is nuts good. It's called Missing. It is on, on demand right now. It's a major uh, movie release. And I got to tell you, now maybe it just appealed to me more because I'm not great on the computer. But it's the story of a girl, a teenage girl, whose mom goes missing. And this girl conducts her investigation. 90% of the entire movie is a computer screen with yeah. her using every everything in the arsenal that you can in a computer to try to get information about her mother. And we got, we, we got a third of the way through and I put it on pause. And okay. I said to my wife, who's a computer scientist, yep. can you really do all this stuff on a computer? <laughs> in the movie this woman is finding cameras and finding her mother yeah. in another country because there's a camera where she was walking and there are cameras everywhere and they're yeah. used and there was a robbery about a year ago across the street from my house and the detective left a card in my thing going hey i need your i need your footage yeah i mean you know? But apparently a lot of this stuff is accessible to anyone, especially if you know how to work passwords, on sure. the internet. This movie is mind-boggling. Now, at the end, you know, they always have to give you a little more than they need to to make it dramatic. But I'm telling you something. I was totally, I, I can't remember being that involved in a movie in years. And my wife said the same thing. My wife normally falls asleep. She was wide awake. The whole Angela, time, Gail was wide awake. And Angela, missing. It's missing. It's missing. It's on demand everywhere. I think you'll love it. It's really good. So I have uh, good news for you, Angelo. You're going to be very happy with me. Missing is part of a larger cinematic universe. And there are two movies that take place in the same universe. One of them is done the exact same way, all on a computer screen, exactly the same. The first one is called Searching, which is uh, done in 2018. Uh, and the second one is called Run. I have not seen Run. I saw Searching in the movie theater, and it was phenomenal. Same thing wow. you're saying. Uh, it's all part of this guy. I'm going to say his name wrong. It's Anish Chaganti. Who Are has, they connected? Like, should yes. you watch them in order? So they said that if you watch Missing, there are all sorts of references to searching oh. and run wow. throughout. Yeah. But uh, I don't know about run, but I know for a fact searching is exactly the same as Missing, where everything's done on the computer, the okay. whole mystery. I'm so on it. I look up those two. You're going to be very happy. I didn't know you could do all this stuff on the computer. I just thought it was for, uh, for information and porn. <laughs> <laughs> and this podcast, which if you're using for, for porn, uh, don't. What are you doing? Uh, all right. Last thing I wanted to talk about, because we are all, I think all three of us, big fans of uh, Quinta Bunsen. Am I saying her name correctly? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Quinta Bunsen. Uh, who Bunsen. is the uh, creator of uh, Abbott Elementary, a show that we all Which like. I love. I don't know, Angelo. Do you like? You don't like it as I much? I don't love the show, but I love her. She is yeah. so talented, and and yeah. Sharon Ralph too. The other woman. They're yeah. both yeah, amazing. Sharon Lee Ralph. And she's it's awesome. If it's Philly, it's got us. Come on, it's right? Well, she was on Saturday Night Live this past weekend, and I thought it was one of the best episodes in a really long time. I thought she absolutely knocked it out of the park. You agree, Angela? You're applauding. 100%. It was uh, the best episode in a couple of years, minimum. Yeah. And I, you know, it, sometimes. Open was so, she, I swear to God, she wrote it because yeah. it was so well done. Yeah. When she, when she referenced about having to tell her mom that she's like, you know, out in the garden, but it's Oprah's garden. And then she goes, 
then I'm having dinner with this guy and it's, and it's absolute, it's Obama. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, that was awesome. The whole uh, thing was the whole hour and a half was, was great right to the end where normally the last couple of bits aren't that great. Right. It was all amazingly good. It's good sketches throughout the the level of writing, even the the news, which my favorite moment of the week was yeah. they Che uh, Michael Che told the audience for April Fools not to laugh at anything that Colin Joe said, yeah. and for the first few minutes, Colin Joe's is starting to flop sweat like every oh, joke. Right. It was great. <laughs> and then Michael Che admits, "Hey, I told him that." And the explosion of laughter in my house. My son and I were watching it. It was just phenomenal so we just wanted to shout her out because it's well, rare... there's one other thing i want to say about snl because yeah. i even like the musical guest lil yachty <laughs> no way. i'm telling you ria they did a six minute mu uh, uh, um, music offering and uh first the first one they did it was beyond great it was a woman the last half of the song was a woman howling without using words and little, yeah, it was. I'm telling you, it was the best SNL maybe since the 70s. <laughs> wow! Oh my god. god, really good. The cast is really coming together. My favorite, mm -hmm. uh, Bowen Yang is just oh. such a talented oh. guy. I can't wait for him to finish up that run on the show and go on and make like 10 movies because he's gonna he be will. Great. He's <laughs> he's a big star, big star, big star, absolutely. All right, Angela, what did we cover this week? What is our All right, let me uh, try to go here? through this. Yellowstone is on Peacock, but not even it does not even appear that Kevin Costner is watching it anymore. <laughs> Use your own. And all the other shows I'm not going to promote because they're, as I pointed out, rotting carcasses. I will say that we had a couple of shows that I definitely Harlan Coben's all of his stuff is on Netflix. And the two that Rhea is recommending is Stay Closer and The Stranger. Stay Close also, and The Stranger. Right. All right. I'm sorry. Okay. And also. Uh, trading spaces versus last comic standing they both <laughs> fudge it but trading spaces probably does it less right Rhea so you can yes, check absolutely. that out where is that yeah. Rhea trading spaces you know I don't know if it's still, I don't think it's still on it may have come back it? it might be on HG TV plus let me look it up real fast okay it's SNL of course is on NBC and that would mean it's also on Peacock also on Peacock uh, I believe there was something else on there uh, Atypical is on Netflix. Uh, Searching and Run are probably also available the same way as Missing is. They're all on demand. If you get on demand, you can get it that way. Uh, Trading Spaces is on TLC and Discovery Channel and Destination America, but I don't believe it's on anymore. Oh wow! No, it stopped in 2019, according to yeah. this. So but maybe you can find maybe you can find a rerun of me. Uh, Trading Spaces. Do you get, hold on, I gotta know. Do you get residuals? When they run it? No, you know, you never get paid for anything. You actually, um, you have to be very careful. Like I had to submit something for my taxes. Oh, you back did? Then. Yeah, okay. I did. Yeah. But do you still get checks? No, I never got a single check. You don't get right. a check as a reality I TV enjoy person. enjoy that. I was on the Goldbergs and I still get checks. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm aware <laughs> of that. They're only like 12 cents now, but still. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get a check for like a dollar seven from one of the movies that I did. And I just That's showed awesome. it to my wife and said, you you hitched your wagon to a star. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And as always, if you rate and review us on iTunes, it helps people find the show. If you leave us a comment on our YouTube channel, we would do our very best to uh, reply to you and get your suggestion on the air. Uh, tell a friend about the show. It really helps us grow. We appreciate you joining us every week and uh, we'll see you next week.